Father, we thank you for allowing us once again to approach your throne of grace. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that as we come to you, begging, Father, that you just keep us single-minded, Father, as we come together and worship you. We pray, Father, that all we do is in acceptance of your way and your will. We thank you, Father, for arising us out of our beds and allowing us just this time of worship. In Jesus' name. The Spirit's name, we pray.
from the Northside Bulletin Board. Northside members, if you are in need of or low on your communion supplies, please contact any of the church staff by Thursday or Friday early evening to schedule a Saturday delivery. Please join us in supporting the Virtual Revival Conference in association with the Churches of Christ nationally. 16 preachers, four weeks of revival, over 50 churches streaming, including the Church of Christ at Northside. While still practicing our social distancing, please tune in and join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live for Wednesday Night Bible Study. You can connect with us on social media. Here are some of the platforms that we can be reached on. Facebook Live at COC Northside Detroit. Twitter at COC underscore Northside. Instagram, COC underscore Northside. And on YouTube, Northside Detroit space COC. You can also find our website at www.cocatnorthside.com. Please follow and subscribe. See you there. There are various ways to send your contribution and offering during this time of social distancing. We invite you to try a reoccurring bill pay through your financial institution or through the U.S. mail. Funds payable to the Church of Christ at Northside, address Church of Christ at Northside, P.O. Box 656, Hazel Park, Michigan, 48030. Also available electronically and through your mobile phone, Cash App. Remember, cash tag is dollar sign Northside Church with no space. Remember to look for the logo. Also available to you is PayPal at paypal.me forward slash coc northside detroit 
or through the church email address at clc.northsidedetroit at gmail.com. I keep falling in love with you over and over and over. so many during this time that we need to keep in our thoughts and prayers. Here are just a few names that we ask you to add to your list as you go through the days and weeks. Thank you. going to look at this morning verses 8, 9, and 10. Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 8, 9, and 10. Here the Bible reads, Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle, and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she calleth all friends and neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost. Likewise, I say unto you that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for once again allowing your children to humbly approach your throne of grace. Father, first and foremost, we come asking for forgiveness of sin. And also, Father, we would like to offer thanksgiving for all that you have allowed us to this point. We pray, Father, that you continue blessing us as our hearts are steadied on today's worship. We pray, Father, for those that are sick and shut in, Father, and we pray that you always bring them to our remembrance so that we can comfort them in their hour of need. We pray also, Father, for the speaker of the hour. We pray that all that you have given him understanding to study, Father, that it comes to his remembrance as he parse outs to your people, thus saith the Lord. We pray that what he says will enlighten those that are listening today online. And we pray, Father, that it will bring souls to your harvest. We ask also, Father, that you will just... Let us pray for the leadership of this world, Father. Those that are in high places, Father. We ask that we pray for their guidance and their health. But most of all, Father, we pray that they understand that you are the reason they are in the position they are in. And that they go throughout their day not being wicked towards the people. But giving them a way to be comforted as they walk throughout their days, Father trying to do their daily activity. And we ask, Father, that us as your children never be hindered when we try to give those that are our neighbors, our friends, and our family 
the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you once again for all that you have allowed us. And we pray, Father, that we can continue to grow in your grace and in your love. In Jesus, the Holy Spirit, in your name, we pray. Amen.
to the digital worship space of the Church of Christ at Northside located in Detroit, Michigan this morning. To our visitors, we're just so glad to have you with us this morning as we come together in this uh, digital realm to worship our awesome God. And we hope and pray that something will be said that will encourage you and edify you uh, in your walk with the Lord. I'm going to ask that you pray with me and then we'll go into our lesson for the morning. And gracious God, our Father in heaven, we come before you right now first to give you thanks. We're so thankful, Father, for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, and your love. That you woke us up this morning to a, a new day. That you have seen fit to give us our health and our strength and our right minds. And that you've enabled us to come together in this digital realm to give you worship and praise, glory and honor. Father God, we pray for all that are assembled here in this digital space this morning, that their hearts be open and receptive to your word today. Father, we pray that as uh, the word is planted in their hearts, it may take root and grow so that through uh, living out your word, uh, each and every uh, life will glorify you, Father. And as it concerns me this morning, Father God, I pray right now that you will hide me behind 
the cross of your darling son, Jesus, that it's not my words, but your words that I heard. And it's not my will, but your will that will be done. That through it all, you will receive all of the glory and the honor. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I would like to direct your attention to the 15th chapter of the gospel account as recorded by the physician Luke. Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke, 15th chapter. And we're going to look at this morning, verses 8, 9, and 10. Luke, the 15th chapter. Verses 8, 9, and 10. Here the Bible reads, Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth all friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost. Likewise, I say unto you that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. As I was washing clothes a few weeks ago, I noticed a couple of coins lying at the bottom of the washing machine. And I thought then I should reach in and get those coins. But instead, I let them ride around in the washer for a couple of more loads. As I walk through my house sometimes, I'll usually see a coin lying here or lying there about the place. And most of the time, at the time, I don't bother to pick them up right then. And I'm willing to bet this morning that most of you, under the sound of my voice, are the same way. Why? Well, a lot of times we don't attach much value to just one coin. We'll say things like, it's not worth the effort. But the truth be told, we are very wrong in that assessment. If we would just take the time to pick up each coin we find, in short order, those coins would add up to a dollar, then two, and then on and on. It was Benjamin Franklin who once said, a penny saved is a penny earned. And he was absolutely right. Because when we reach down and we pick up that coin and pick it up from disuse, we have earned ourselves something that has the potential to contribute something of value to our lives. Here in Luke chapter 15, Jesus tells four stories or four parables uh, in response to some Pharisees one day and some scribes who murmured about his congregating with publicans and sinners. Last week we looked at the, the story of or the parable of the shepherd who having a hundred sheep, when he discovered that one was lost, he left the ninety-nine and searched for that one lost sheep until he found it. Here, we find a woman with ten coins. And the Bible lets us know that she lost one of the ten. And instead of shrugging her shoulders and walking away like we might do with a coin, she went about the process of finding that coin 
and restoring it to its proper place. And this parable of this lost coin, just like the parable of the lost sheep, was designed to teach us that God sees the value of just one. And I want to take a few minutes this morning to look into this precious parable and to see why this woman attached such a value to just one coin and why she went about such lengths to ensure that it was restored to its proper place. There are some reasons why all of this happened and they illustrate for us why he's always in pursuit of that prize. And that's the subject I want us to deal with this morning in pursuit of a precious prize. First of all, as we look at this woman who's uh, diligently in search of this missing coin, we have to realize, number one, that there is a purpose attached to this coin. There is a purpose attached to this coin. You see, in that particular day and time, in that culture, married women wore a headband that was made up of coins that were strung together. These coins were typically given to the bride by her father when she got married. And the headband served several functions in the life of that married woman of that time. First of all, it declared her status as a married woman. It told the public, especially other men, that she was unavailable. It sort of served the same purpose as our wedding bands do today. It showed that her status was, I'm married. But those coins also would declare that woman's independence. They were a constant reminder to her husband that if he divorced her, she was able to make a fresh start. She might be his wife, but if he didn't want her anymore, she could make it without him. Now, that one coin was the equivalent of one day's wages. And by the amount of coins she had, it would seem that she and her husband were poor because she only had 10 coins in her headband. Wealthy women usually would wear headbands that were composed of dozens of coins. But this woman only had 10. But there was another purpose behind this headband made of coins. See, it was used to identify sinful woman. See, when a woman had been guilty of unfaithfulness, a coin sometimes would be removed from her headband and it would be a telling signal to everybody who saw her that she was unfaithful. To sum all of that up, these coins were there to bring glory to the bride. And as long as that one coin was missing, her beauty was marred and incomplete. And with this in mind, it becomes very easy to see why the loss of this one coin was enough to cause this woman to leap into action to find it. That coin was precious to that woman. That's why she got all worked up about it. But it had absolutely no value while it was lost. It was good for nothing. 
It cannot adorn her head. It cannot grace her life. It cannot be used to provide the essentials of life. It was useless as long as it was lost. That's why it was so important that it would be found. It was just one piece of silver. But it was worth everything to this woman. Now, of course, the object of this parable is to teach the value of one sinner to the Lord. You see, just like that lost silver, people were not created to live lives of sin and disobedience to God. God made man for one purpose, for his own glory. And when God made man, he made him in his image. He made him for fellowship so that he can walk with man. He, and when man sinned, he became lost and separated from the presence of God. You see, a life that's lived for the Lord is a powerful and a beautiful thing. But a lost life is of no value at all. But when that lost life is found and when that lost life is restored to its proper place by the power of God, that life can be all that God designed it to be in the first place. And for this woman, her life could not be complete until she had found the coin that was lost. It filled an important place in her life. Now understand this this morning. God is complete without you, without me, or without anybody else. But when we are saved by His grace, filled with His Spirit, and used for his glory. We serve the function of adorning the Lord and bringing glory to his name. This coin that was lost had a purpose attached to it. But this coin that was lost also had a plan that was attached to it. I want you to see something here. See, when this woman discovers that a coin had been lost, she springs into action to see that it is restored because to her, it's a valuable thing. The Bible says that she lights a light. She begins to move things around. She begins to sweep and to search the house until that coin is found. She had a will to find it. She worked to find it. And in the end, she won because she found it. Now, something about that coin. That coin was lost in the darkness. You see, houses in those days didn't have windows. They didn't have electric lights that uh, uh, your house and my house has. It was dark in that house. So the Bible says that she had to light a light or light a candle. Also, it was lost in the dirt. See, poor people's houses back in those days had dirt floors. They didn't have carpeting or, or hardwood floors or, or, or marble floors like we might have. It was lost in the darkness and it was lost in the dirt. But it was also lost in disuse. See, a lost coin or anything that is lost can't be used for the purpose that it was designed for. And it was lost finally within the dwelling. It was lost inside the house. And what a picture that coin is, is just like men who don't know the Lord. First of all, lost men are in darkness. Now, they may be very brilliant intellectually speaking, but spiritually speaking, they're blind. They are lost in the black darkness of spiritual ignorance. They don't know their condition. And they don't know what they need until they are found by the Lord. Second of all, 
Lost men are in the dirt. You see, back then when a coin was stamped, it was usually stamped with the image of the ruler of that particular land. And when a coin was lost in the dirt, the image of that ruler on the coin would be hidden and marred and covered up. And it's the same with lost men. You see, we're made to be in the image of God. But that image has been marred and, and it needs to be cleansed so that the image of the Lord might be restored. And if you don't think men are dirty, just look at our world today. Man is dirty and man needs somebody to reach into the dirt of his life, pick him up and clean him up. Men tend toward dirt. You don't believe me? Just stay out to bathe for several days. You don't have to go out and play in the dirt. You don't even have to go outside. Just stay in the house and don't bathe for several days. And see what I mean. And it's the same with us spiritually. Men tend toward dirt. And they need the intervention of the Lord to clean them up and to make them whole again. But third, lost men are in disuse. Just as that lost coin was unusable, a lost life is the same way. It has to be cleaned up and it has to be restored before the Lord can use it for his glory. But I want you to get number four especially. Lost men are everywhere, even in the dwelling. See, I found lost coins before in the car, in the yard, in the street. But I've also found them in the house. And it's the same with lost men. They can be found everywhere. Even in the house of the Lord. And because of the condition of that coin, this woman has a point. She, she goes about the business of finding it. She makes up her mind to do whatever it takes to find that lost coin. And that's just what she does. She writes a right. She moves the furniture about. She sweeps the floor. Looks everywhere for that coin. And she does not stop until she finds it. And here, that's a picture right there of what God does for us. He's done everything that is necessary for the salvation of lost people. He loves them. He provided a perfect salvation for them. He gave his son to pay the redemption price for them. He calls men to come to him. And when they come, he saves them completely. He has a perfect plan to save those who are lost. Now, we may wonder... Why this woman went all through this trouble just to find one lost coin? We spend more than a day's wage on a room for a vacation. We blow that much money on junk from time to time. But her reason was that this coin, this one lost coin, was of immeasurable value to her. And she was willing to do whatever it took to see that coin was restored. Because to her, that one coin had tremendous value. And when it comes to people, understand that we live in a society that places little value on an individual. Just think about it, the fact that we're reduced to mere numbers. You're reduced to a social security number or a driver's license number 
or respect their number 12, on and on and on. But from God's perspective, every person has value. He loves those who are lost and he labors to find them and to save them. And regardless of who you are, the Lord loves you. And he sees value in your life. And he will save you and clean you up and change you and use you if you will come to him by faith. We see that this coin had a purpose attached to it. And we see that this coin had a plan attached to it. But I want you to watch number three. This coin also had a praise attached to it. Look at verse number nine. The Bible says, and when she had found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors and says, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. When this woman found the coin, she retrieved it and she restores it to its proper place. Just as that coin could not lift itself out of the darkness and the dirt and the disuse that it was in, neither could a lost man do it for himself. But when the Lord comes to us, he releases that lost man from his disuse. And because of that, just like with this coin, this coin being found was a cause for rejoicing. So she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, let's have a party. I found the coin that was lost. And they began to rejoice. That was a happy day for that woman. But verse 10 makes the transition for us. The Bible says in verse 10, likewise, I say unto you that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. We're told that there is present, uh, a rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God because of one sinner that repents. Heaven gets excited when a lost one is found. Why? Because something of value has been restored to its proper place. God is glorified. A soul misses hell. That which was unusable now is available for the master's use. That which was dirty and made ugly by the dirt of sin is now cleaned up and made beautiful by the grace of God. It's a glorious day when a lost person is saved by the grace of the Lord God. Nothing honors him like a soul being saved. And that's important. When you look at the contrast that is displayed in the first two verses of this chapter. Go back up to verses 1 and 2 again. The Bible says this. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and the sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Watch what's going on. The publicans and sinners were drawing now or getting close to Jesus. They wanted to hear what he had to say. And when the public, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes, the religious folk saw this, they had a problem with it. This man receiveth sinners and eats with them. We would never do a thing like that. There's a problem here. The Bible says that they murmured or, or they, they voiced displeasure among themselves. And that becomes just like some of us sometimes. 
when somebody who's had a checkered past, and I, I gotta say this, uh, don't look funny at nobody's checkered past because if you look back in the history of your life, you see some checkers there as well. We look funny at folk who are in sin when they want to come to Jesus and, and we say, what's up on them? Don't worry about what's up on them. They in the right place. They trying to get to Jesus. We ought to be rejoicing. We ought to be praising God when somebody comes to Jesus uh, in recognition that they need him because nothing honors him more than a soul being saved. And just like this woman's neighbors and friends who were called together with her to rejoice when that lost coin was found, we ought to be rejoicing just like the angels in heaven when a lost one comes home to Jesus. And if there's a final word in all of this, here it is. God is interested and what others might think of as worthless. He don't care what you might think of somebody else's worth. He really doesn't care what you think about your own worth. He doesn't care what others will say about your worth. But he looks at you through the eyes of love and the eyes of grace and sees you as being worthy of his son. And if you're like that coin this morning, if you're lost in the darkness and the dirt and the disuse of sin, I invite you to come to the Lord this morning. Whether you're lost out there or even in the house. Because you can be lost in the house just like this coin was. You need to come to Jesus right now. Come to Jesus, having faith in what you've heard that he came in to die for your sins. Let that faith lead you to repentance. When you turn away from your sin and turn to him, let it lead you to confession or standing in agreement with the fact that Jesus is the Christ and that he's the son of God. And let it lead you to baptism for the remission of all of your sins. It leads you right there to salvation. It leads you to restoration. It leads you to being cleaned up and now being able to be used for the glory of God. And one day it will lead you to heaven eternal with him. If you fall in short as a child of God, you're that one that's lost in the house, in the dwelling. And you need to come back to him. With a penitent spirit, Father, forgive me, I have sinned and I have fallen short. God is faithful and just to forgive you of whatever sins that you've committed and restore you back to your proper place so you can be used for his glory as well. And whatever your need is this morning, if you need to be restored to him, if you need to be baptized into him, if you just need prayer this morning, if you need someone to talk to this morning, whatever your need is, we just invite you right now to reach out to us at the contact information on your screen. And whatever your need is, we'll get right back with you and to help you facilitate that need. If it's prayer, we'll pray with you. If it's restoration, we'll lead you on your restoration journey. If it's a, a baptism to put Christ on this morning, we will make sure that that happens right away. Whatever your need is, just reach out and we'll reach out right back to you. The message is yours this morning. And we pray that someone was edified, someone's heart was touched this morning. And we'll want to ask right now, what must I do? to be saved? What must I do to be restored back into the fold? So just like that lost coin, I can be used for the owner and the master's glory. The message is yours. 
And at this time, we're going to turn the service back over to those who are going to further facilitate it. God bless you, and we love you. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Give myself away. Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, as we focus our hearts on the Lord's Supper. For I received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. For after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Heavenly Father, we humbly bow and direct ourselves now by the example of thy dear Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, asking your blessings on these emblems, this bread and cup that represent your Son's broken body and shed blood, shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. This in all grace, favor, and blessings we ask in his name. Amen. So I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself away. Stand your feet away, away. I give myself away. So you, so you can. I give, I give myself. in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11 
salvation and glory, glory, honor, and power to the Lord our God. For the Lord, for the Lord our God is mighty, and the Lord our God is omnipotent. grace and mercy, God of love. We thank you this morning for allowing us to gather this morning in this digital worship space to bring you glory and honor. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the things that we've said and done be pleasing into thy sight, and if not, we ask your forgiveness. And Father God, we ask your blessings continued upon us as we walk day by day trying to give you glory through our lives and through our actions. Father, bless us right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation, salvation, and glory, and glory, and honor, and power to the Lord. Of kings and the Lord, our God. He is 
to join this time. We continue to pray for your health and safety. We are located at 18460 Conant Avenue in the city of Detroit. Be blessed.